not over yet!
What's up everyone, it's Area of Effect with another out of the box build, this time a Mad Sork similar to the remote detonator build, a ranged bomber with 1v1 capability. Let's jump in. Taking a look at the stat screen, we've got almost 12,000 penetration, over 5,000 weapon and spell damage, over 30% crit, decent resistances still, decent max health and max magicka, and decent recoveries. Um, on the back bar, we're over 30,000 spell resistance and 27,000 physical resistance. We still have 5,000 weapon damage and spell damage. And this is why we're not just a glass cannon and can stick around and continue fighting after the bomb or 1v1s. Vampire stage 3, we want that undeath passive for more damage mitigation the lower our health gets. And stage 2 uh, for the... Uh, weapon and spell damage 300 weapon and spell damage when we leave mist form our mundus is the thief you want to get that crit chance at least over 30 on this build and uh, jewels of misrule that's going to be our food big max health big magicka and stamina recoveries keeping our resources going keeping us alive again not going for a glass cannon setup on this build but you could and i'll discuss some of that later on and if you would go that route you'd go max magicka you know maximum spell damage maximum crit no resistances no recoveries everything you know glass cannon setup we are an orc we love the brawny passive for the max dam the unflinching rage for the max health and the healing off of damage and swift warrior weapon and spell damage by 258 and our mobility is on point as an orc here all right let's jump into the gear now the first five piece set dark convergence we're going with sword and board on this setup we've only got it active on this bar but it's of no consequence because there's a 25 second cooldown anyway to the proc max madge penetration weapon and spell damage basically when you throw a ground-based effect on the ground you're going to call all enemies into the area applies a six uh 60 snare a one second stun and then the center of the uh, the black hole, basically, of the Dark Convergence proc is going to deal the larger number of damage. The further from the center, is it, they're going to receive the smaller number of damage. But the more people in it, the damage is going to go up. Now, we are using Mighty Chudan on this for the monster set. And the reason for that is we don't want to have to cast Major Resolve and Major Ward with Hurricane or Boundless Storm. I'll get into why in a minute. It has to do with skill slots available. The Curious of the Trainee was just going to help us. It was heavy on the biggest piece, the chest, and that Trainee reinforced gives us uh, more resistance and that max health one-piece uh, trait. So you're getting the most out of a one-piece. We have extra there. All right, so more Dark Convergence. Now, the next five-piece set, you guessed it, none other than Vicious Death, Weapon and Spell Damage, Max Magicka, Critical Chance, Penetration, and when you kill a player, they violently explode for 22 almost thousand flame damage to all enemies in a five meter radius this works so well with mage's wrath which also explodes when they drop below 20 percent health and i love how they just double proc and they become a bomb and that's the whole strategy and concept behind this build is making the enemy become a bomb with inevitable detonation haunting curse mage's wrath vicious death it starts a chain reaction remotely where the players just kill themselves in a group and the more players the more damage we're running markin ring of majesty for our mythic you could run sea serpents uh, for more damage but less mobility less resistance or something else i just this here gave me 200 weapon and spell damage constantly flat and more resistances um, as you see sea serpent is going to give us major berserk increasing our damage by 10 percent and major courage increasing our weapon and spell damage by 430. Like I said, there are tweaks to this build. You could push yourself completely in the direction of damage. Narianth would be one that could proc. Uh, you throw that Dark Convergence um, proc with Fire Rune or Daedric Mines and uh, use uh, Shock Ring or something for direct damage, and it's going to proc. Prior Theric is going to be something that you could do. Direct damage AoE, it's going to cause everybody to take that physical damage and also increase their AoE damage by 5%. And then honestly, Storm Fist is really a good one. Look at the tooltip, 15,000. You can't control when this procs, that's the problem. It just procs off of any damage and it's you know got a percentage, but then you can go safe with Balorg. Use your ultimate and you know you're gonna get that penetration and you're gonna get that weapon and spell damage when you need it most for you know your optimal bomb setup. This is pretty much used a lot in bombs with ulti. 
But like I said, I use Mighty Chudon for that resistance and freeing up a slot, and you'll see why when I get into the skills section. And I like the purple proc that it has as it goes up your body. I didn't show this yet, the Lightning Staff of Vicious Death, that is what we're using. It's also only on one bar, the Vicious Death bar. We're doing that because of the Lightning Staff passives, which basically say, um, the Lightning Staffs increase, increase your damage done with direct damage and channeled effects by 12%. So direct damage is everything we're doing. Dark Convergence, the Fire Rune Ore Mines, uh, Force Pulse Shock Ring, uh, Inevitable Detonation, uh, Haunting Curse, Vicious Death, um, Mage's Wrath. It's all direct damage, so 12% increase. We're using Elusive Mist as a vampire skill instead of Streak. You could use Streak if you're not a vampire, but we want this 300 weapon and spell damage for 6 seconds. I don't like this skill as much, to be honest. The functionality of it, how it feels when you do it, it's kind of clunky. You land kind of awkward. Sometimes it's like it does it twice when you did it once. I don't know. Uh, streak is a lot more reliable, I feel like, but I want that um, 300 weapon and spell damage. It puts us over 5,000 weapon and spell damage. And like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, we're stage 3 for the undeath passive. Um, and at stage 3, you see the uh, recoveries, flame damage, regular ability, vampire abilities. This is how it scales up or down on your stage. All right, let's jump into skills now. First skill, Inevitable Detonation. Curse an enemy with a magical bomb that explodes after four seconds. It only deals 1786, almost 2000, but uh, it, it's guaranteed to go off if it's dispelled early or purified. But the thing is, each enemy within the bomb's radius increases the damage by 100%. So five enemies, 500%. You get a big group. It includes pets and stuff as well. So put, put the bomb on the guy. Here you go. He's Ticking down, you saw the explosion, the big troll got the crit hit, but you can load them all up separately and they'll all have a bomb. Okay, so that went off three times. It has a one second cast time, but it's quick. If you cast it, cast it, cast it, you can uh, you can get at least two of them off within a rotation of time frame that I'll show you with Haunting Curse. This one takes three and a half seconds to go off. So it's a little quicker, half a second quicker than Inevitable Detonation. It's a purple bomb, 11,000 damage to the primary and 5,000 to the secondary targets all around. So you can cast two Inevitable Detonations, for example, and then, see there's Daedric, there's Haunting Curse. It casts in, in, instantly and it's got an explosion at uh, three and a half second mark and then eight second mark right here. There it goes, 10,000. These other guys took the splash damage. But you can cast Inevitable, cast Inevitable, cast Inevitable, Haunting Curse. There you go. You're going to see boom, 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 boom. Now, all of that, if you suck them in with uh, Dark Convergence, with a Fire Rune or something like that, or Haunt, De uh, Daedric Mines, they're all going to have bombs. They're all going to be drawn into the same area, and they're all going to go off, okay, and hurt each other. It's like multiple bombs. We'll display that in a better example later. Resolving Vigor, this is our Stamina Heal, also gives us minor resolve and minor reward, increasing our resistances by 3,000. Next skill, Scalding Rune, comes from the Mage's Guild abilities. We don't want the Morph that does the stun because we're already going to be applying a stun with Dark Convergence. They will be immune, so there's going to be no stun. So we're taking the Dot instead. What happens? We throw the Fire Rune on the ground, it's 88, almost 9,000 flame damage instantly to everybody, by the way. And then there's flame damage over time. So there you go. I threw it and Dark Convergence proc because of it. And everybody you saw took the damage. Now, these dummies cannot be drawn into the core, but that's what would happen to real life players or uh, even in PvE, uh, NPC enemies. So Fire Rune is how we activate um, Dark Convergence, but you could use... Uh, Daedric Mines, like I've done before, which also gives them an immobilize. Critical Surge, we're going to get our major uh, brutality and sorcery from this one, increasing our weapon and spell damage by 20% for 33 seconds, and critical hits heal us for over 3,000 once every second. On the Sword and Board bar, we're using the ultimate Spell Wall. For 7 seconds, we can block with no cost and also cast skills while blocking. This usually... <laughs> ends up being my go-to ultimate even more so than any kind of like ice comet or adronach or something else because it allows me to uninterrupted do my rotation while also reflecting 
projectiles back. Now you could use a, move, a movability pods or you get getting five heavy and, and try to use the um, immovable skill off the heavy armor skill line just to get some CC immunity and then you don't have to worry about getting getting interrupted or knocked down or something during your rotation. But your rotation, see how I got the shield wall up? I did two, a haunting curse. There it was. And then I didn't even do the uh, dark convergence proc. But again, I'll show that later. On the other bar, the staff bar, Force Pulse. To be honest, with my non-glass cannon playstyle, I preferred this skill over Shock Ring. It's a spammable that can allow me to proc easily Crystal Frags, which gives me really good 1v1 um, ranged, you know, direct damage burst combo. But you could, if you wanted to go straight bomb, pick Elemental Ring, because with a Shock Staff, it increases the damage based on the number of enemies hit. So you draw them all in with Dark Convergence and everybody in that circle is going to increase your damage to Shock Ring. And you could spam it. Again, all AoE. Um, but I went with Force Pulse on mine. My, my con you know, what I consider the optimal setup. And as you can see, Force Pulse has kind of an AoE as well. See the other people taking the damage? The beam like is bouncing around. That's because of status effects. When you hit them with Force Pulse, if an enemy nearby has a status effect, they will also take the Force Pulse damage. But it won't be like the triple elemental damage. It'll just be a big burst of magic damage. But you can still get some AoE out of it. So you hit that into a crowd. Dark Conversion. Uh, we use Stamina to get Health and Magicka. But we also get Minor Berserk for 20 seconds, increasing our damage done by 5%. The other morph costs Magicka and gives you Stamina and Health back. You get Minor Berserk and also Minor Force, increasing your critical damage by 10%. But the way I'm set up with resource management, I did not like the way um, the other morph worked for me and the way I want to play. But again, if you were a Glass Cannon, you cast that before. Now you got Minor Force, 10% crit damage. Crystal Frags, I talked about this briefly uh, during when I was talking about Force Pulse Weaving, but anyhow, almost 11,000 magic damage frag, but while slotted, when you cast a non-ultimate ability, a 33% chance, one in three, you're gonna proc a Crystal Frag that's an instant proc. Your hands glow purple, they're gonna have crystals rotating around it. You hear like a glass shatter, there that is, right there. And basically it casts instantly, costs half as much, and deals 66% more damage. So it's gonna cost less resources, cast instantly, there it is. Look at 26,000 I just got with that one. And it's a instant cast. You don't have to like conjure up the ball. Um, and like I said, deals more damage. So we, man, I tell you, on a Sork, Force Pulse and Crystal Frags with this skill, Mage's Wrath, is just lethal. So Mage's Wrath, call down lightning, only less than 4,000, almost 4,000 shock damage up front, but it loads him up for four seconds. Look at his feet. I hit him with Mage's Wrath. He's loaded up for four seconds. If this enemy were to, and you could do more than one at a time, if you can see here, if this enemy were to fall below 20% health while he's loaded up in that four second period with Mage's Wrath, it is going to proc and deal intense damage, insane damage to him and all enemies around uh, the target creating a bomb like I just like I discussed earlier I already kind of talked about mist form uh, I didn't mention that you get major evasion and uh, you know major expedition basically your movement speed by 30% when you come out and uh, you get reduced area of effect damage by 20% when you come out and like I the primary reason I'm using it is for the 300 weapon and spell damage but you can use it to get around like I said I like way more i like streak but that's what i went with on this for the uh the offensive benefits of it so yeah with that mist form and the berserker glyph on the weapon we get over 5,000 weapon and spell damage that way all right so uh the ultimate now on this bar i have slotted the uh atronach because it's a daedric uh, ability which gives us our you know health and stamina recovery increased by 20 percent um, but you could do something like Ice Comet, you know. The Daedric, um, the Greater Storm Atronach does drop in and deal a big shock damage AoE. It stuns everybody for three seconds. Obviously, we're not going to get that if they are already stunned in the Dark Convergence Circle or on cooldown. But then allies can synergize uh, with the Atronach to give you and him and everybody else major berserk for 10 seconds. So I, I do kind of like that. But again, I've only got it slotted because the passives here, you got to have a Daedric Summoning ability 
as a sort to get that 20% health and stamina recovery. Now, the health isn't as big of a deal as I'm a vampire stage three, so my health recovery is already stunted, but 20% stamina recovery is big. But check it out. Ice Comet, over 20,000 frost damage to everybody in the area. That's a much bigger bomb. But if we put on Ice Comet, and I'm trying to stay loyal to my uh, Daedric um, summoning abilities for the passives, I don't have one here now. So what can I do? I, I mean, I guess I can get rid of Elusive Mist. We can put on, um, you know, any of these. I've already got Haunting Curse in the back bar. Uh, but check it out. Daedric Protection. Health and stamina recovery 20% while you have one slotted. And then 8% max health when you have one active. So I don't know. I'm trying I always try to get the most bang for my buck on a build, especially like I said in this one. I'm trying to not just be a glass cannon. Um, that's kind of the concept of this. I don't want to be a kamikaze bomber. I don't want to be the center of the bomb. But you could put in streak, by the way, like I discussed, if you don't want to use elusive mist. But then you lose that 300 weapon and spell damage. So I'm slotting Elusive Mist while still kind of getting the benefits of Streak. And then like I said earlier, uh, Elemental Ring, you could put in place of Force Pulse because it deals that big AoE damage and you could spam it. And then you could even go further. Let's get rid of the frags, okay, unless you wanted to keep them. Put on Inner Light for even more crit and that extra max magicka by 5%. But you're going to get your weapon and spell critical up much higher, delivering much more likely crit hits. And then now you've got Ice Comet, Inner Light, Shock Ring, okay? Um, you could put a Daedric Summoning ability back on, like Bound Aegis, for even more Max Magicka. On top of that 5%, you get the 8% there. And you get Minor Resolve, Minor Ward, maybe take off Vigor on the back and do something else. But there are, like I said, there's setup options, but there is one where you could just basically set yourself up for the most uh, destructive, damaging... Um, AOE bomb offensive type of setup, but you're not going to have the resources or the damage mitigation or the survivability. But check this out. Inevitable Detonation, Inevitable Detonation, Haunting Curse, Fire Rune, Ice Comet, Mage's Wrath, and then now we're going to spam Shock Ring. And look at those numbers. That was That is how you would do, that's just three targets as well. It would be much more in a much bigger group. That's what the optimal setup with 42% crit, inner light slotted, um, ice comet, shock ring, no frags, no force pulse. But like I said, for me, I don't know, the play style was a lot harder that way and a lot less survivable. I wanted to do more than just bomb because I'm an idiot. All right, blue tree, fighting finesse, increased critical damage and healing done by 8%. That's obviously going to matter with higher crit. Master at arms, direct damage attacks by 6%. Like I said, everything is direct damage for us. Um, untamed aggression, an additional 150 weapon and spell damage, helping get us over 5,000 and arcane supremacy because I wanted that more max magicka. But you could put in the occult overload one, which gives you uh, the enemy turns into a bomb even more when they're under the effects of a status effect, especially in Cyrodiil, not battlegrounds. Sustained by suffering 150 magicka health and stamina recovery while under the effects of a negative effect, rejuvenation, a constant 90 magicka health and stamina recovery. Fortified, 1,700 physical and spell resistance. That actually helped put us over 30,000. And then Boundless Vitality, 1,400 max health. I was like 27,000 plus max health on this build again. Now, like I said, to call Overload, this was an option. Basically, if they have a status effect, they will blow up uh in a deal an additional almost 5200 oblivion damage and oblivion damage so you know can't be blocked and goes through shields so that's going to wrap up the cp distribution and wrap up this build video the remote detonator 2 build if you like this build and you want to see more head on over to my channel i've got all types on there all roles stamina magicka healers tanks damage dealers and extra stuff as well as always thanks for watching area of effect Signing out.